Hi, I'm the chap, and this, and this is the 1872 Fuvet carbine. Sorry, Thais, but you did dare me to go nuts. Now, for those of you who had no idea why I just said that, please see the link below and you'll see CN Arsenal's excellent episode on the cropper check system. And for those of you who've come from there, welcome. So here we have the very nice 1872 Fruviert carbine, named after its creator, the uh, Ferdinand Fruviert. And he seems to be the last uh, member, at least the last member active in the gun trade of a gunsmith family that spanned at least 250 years. And you'll see their name on uh, a whole range of Austrian military guns. Uh, I think the earliest I've seen personally is uh, in the 1840s pattern tube lock rifles, but uh, I've seen them on Lorenz. Uh, I've seen them then on the Vandal, which they produced as well as this. So it was obviously a very trusted name, uh, you know, the go-to guys for uh, Austrian military guns in uh, at least back in the day when the whole Austrian firearms industry was a amalgamation of small manufacturers. Um, the carbine itself, you can more or less consider it the second uh, repeating bolt action rifle in service in Europe at the time. And uh, the first being the Swiss Vetterli. And it's interesting that they are both under barrel tube fed uh, rifles, but Whereas the Vetterli has the uh, vertical Winchester-esque uh, feeding mechanism, this guy actually has a tilting elevator, which uh, later becomes synonymous with uh, the Kropacek system. But uh, this one was first. So let's do a quick overview of the carbine itself, and then we'll delve inside and then we'll take it to the range. So here we have it, a nice dainty little carbine, which is just over 40 inches long. We have here a nice little uh, back sight, adjustable from 100 to 600 schritt or paces. Now that's unusual in itself in that it's got ratchet teeth on the underside of the sight leaf. So all you need to do is push up on the slider and it automatically locks in position and it's biased in the downward position so when you release it flips back down and the front sight has also got something peculiar it's had this kind of coffee bean shape and uh, it serves as the front sight but also as the uh, locking lug for the socket bayonet and it's this strange oval shape because the socket bayonet has a helical groove in it and uh, this shape helps twist when you put the socket on. So what exactly is going on here? Now, there's a couple of things on the outside we can see. We have this selector switch here which is uh, so you can shut off the magazine or rather shut off the feeding system so you can uh, fire a single shot. Then you have this pokey thing here, poking up from below, which has a, uh, a screw going in, which is going to interact with the bolt. And this screw on the other side, which is for disassembly. I'll get to that in a second. And then we have this weird dip here on the top, which is a uh, a re sloped recess and what that is is a surface for the extractor to hook into so the extractor is a bit of a weird construction I'll see if I can show you by opening the bolt you can see it there we go plain to see there that's the extractor so it's a linear extractor traveling in a in a slot and when you put the bolt forward, 
Let's cock on closing, by the way. The extractor disconnects from the bolt. It has a claw at the front for the rim of the case and a claw at the back, which catches in this slot here when the bolt is booming back. So at about halfway, it'll catch and then pull back to extract the cartridge. There's no ejector in this. And then when you pull it forward, when you push it forward, the cartridge will push the extractor back in until a certain point, and then when you close, it'll disconnect again. A bit strange. So I'll take the bolt out, and then we can have a look at that, because that also got some weird stuff going on. First, I need a screwdriver. One screwdriver required. So two things we need to do to uh, remove the bolt. We need to remove this screw here, which is part of the repeat mechanism. And then we need to turn this screw. And what that does is it takes the rear claw of the extractor uh, it holds it inside the receiver wall, which allows you to pull the, the bolt back. So this is the sole purpose of this screw. And now, hopefully, I can just pull the bolt out all the way. There we go. Maybe you can see in there, there you can see the rear claw. Wait, my pokey thing. That's the rear claw of the extractor there, and it's being hooked inwards by the hook that's uh, on the end of this screw. So let's leave that here for now. So the bolt, actually very reminiscent of a chassepot bolt. So here it's just a plain cylinder, and you've got this screw cap at the end which is exactly like the Chaspo. And uh, they've got a rather complicated striker arrangement with a, uh, a locking nut. I won't undo that because it's very difficult to get to. So here's the selector switch. All that does is cover or un uncover a hole here, whose purpose will become clear in a second. And the really odd thing is that the firing pin is not centered and I have no idea why. And it's not the only one. Other owners have confirmed that theirs is also off-center. I can only assume that primers back in the day were a lot wider. Um, now, if you want to fire them, you have to have some soft primers so that uh, they'll go off even when they're struck a bit off-center. So that's the bolt. And in here, there's not much to see. You can see here the elevator. And there we go. Now to really see how it goes, I'm going to need to take this mechanism out of the wood. So let me just fast forward until I get there. So here we have it in one convenient package, straight out of the stock. Now this magazine construction is very nice, very convenient for cleaning, disassembly, but it does mean there is an enormously deep channel in the stock and it's not very thick so uh, I think dropping this from a horse would get this straight back to the armory for a new stock right what do we have going on well let me point out a few elements we've got this block here which is fixed to the receiver and it's around this that everything is going to move. We have the elevator there, which is spring biased due to this big leaf spring underneath, the end of which is tucked inside this the block here. So this is always biased in the upward position. It has at the front two little feet here, which limit how far up it can go. So they, they contact the bottom of the surface of the receiver here, so they can't go any further up. And it's got this little dog leg here sticking out, 
which has uh, two functions. Firstly, it's what this stem here pushes against when the bolt is closed to push it back down. And secondly, it acts as a lock lug, which this slider locks or releases. And this slider is fixed on the bolt. It can only move backwards and forwards in this direction. It has an arm that sticks through the receiver. And the screw here, which I had to remove for disassembly, the end of that screw travels inside the groove on the bolt. And uh, moving the bolt will cause the screw to move backwards and forwards, which will cause the whole slider to move backwards and forwards. And the slider is biased in the forward direction due to this flat spring here on the back. And the trigger is very, very simple. One piece. So, I hope all the elements are clear. Now let's see how it all works. So in this position, we have the elevator is up, so a cartridge would then would be fed in. And we close the bolt, and it's a cock on closing by the way, so I'm just gonna pull the trigger so that it makes things easier for me. Right, so the bolt is closed, we turn it down. This surface on the bottom of the bolt lug here is going to push down on the stem. Let's get the camera angle, and when that's done, the stem is going to push down on this leg here. And watch what's happening to the sliding block there. Click. So the bolt is closed. The elevator is down. It's also locked down because this slider has been pushed forward again. So this is going nowhere. That allows a uh, cartridge to shoot into the elevator. Now it must be specified that uh, there's no controlled feed on this, so it's entirely reliant on cartridge length. If your cartridge is too long, it means the bullet will still be sticking into the end of the magazine and the lifter won't be able to lift. And conversely, if the cartridge is too short, you'll get the uh, back end of the next cartridge sticking out and which will also block the elevator. So, uh, yeah, cartridge length was really critical. So, cartridge is in the elevator. What happens next? Well, you open the bolt. And you can hear the extractor claw clicking in. Once it reaches a certain point, the cartridge is extracted. Obviously at speed, it would come sliding out. Whoops. And then you reach a natural stop. And what that is, is the head of this screw hitting the end of the slot here. And that's not the end of the story. So when you're working the bolt, you have to pull past this sort of first resistance. And once again, watch what's happening to this bar. It's not very convenient without the stock here. There, you catch that? This is what's happening at the last movement. So that allows this, the foot here to snap in to its recess there and it's allowed, the lifter is allowed to lift. And the combination of the cartridge extraction and the lifting of the next cartridge allows the empty to be, to be ejected. So in single shot, conversely, so when we flip the selector like that, you don't get this action because this, the pin here is going to go into that hole and nothing's going to happen to the elevator. And when you eject, in that case, you extract and then you just have to tip your empty out. So. This is how it works. To me, it looks like someone, or I'm guessing Mr. Fruworth had a brilliant idea, but he only had building blocks. 
to do it with because it's it's all very blocky it all uses very basic flat springs that anybody could cut out of sheet metal and uh, even the components here the slider they're all basic cuts so nothing very complicated right i shall put this back in the stock and feed a couple of dummy cartridges in and then hopefully you can see it going a little bit at speed so here we are reassembled and ready for action now these are sometimes quoted as being in eight eight shot capacity now this will only fit eight if i load up the the, uh, the tube sit one in the elevator and chamber one it's actually got a six shot magazine capacity plus two so let's do that if you remember this has no controlled feed so i can push them in and sometimes they get caught on the end sometimes they just come straight back question of luck two they just thumb them in a bit three four five six this is seven i can't push it all the way in so that has to sit in the elevator and theoretically i could chamber one as well now one of the disadvantages of this non-controlled feed is when you've got a full magazine you've got the full spring tension on the nose of the cartridge that's in the elevator here and that sometimes hinders the elevator because that's only working on spring pressure so if the spring pressure is not enough to overcome the friction between the base and the nose here you've got a problem like here for example i try and uh, release the elevator and nothing happens this um, if you compare it to its contemporary or european contemporary the swiss vetterli that has a direct mechanical linkage between the lifter and the bolt which means in this case you just sh shove the bolt back and the elevator will rise no matter what the friction is at this critical point here so to make things easier on myself i'll remove this one and there is less spring tension so let's get this working i'm just going to keep the trigger pulled to save uh, save me arms so say one was chambered now you'd extract vigorously and so you hit the first natural stop and then you overextend which will pull this arm back if you remember and will allow the elevator to flip up so there you go next one is presented feed it and then you slam the bolt down what will happen then this pin will be pushed in elevator goes down next cartridge will shoot in you should be able to hear that you know fire extract again you have to work the bolt very hard all the time new one old one is ejected new one presented loaded fire new one fire 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 and we're gone there we go so it does work but it's a lot of hard work because you're always fighting at the end against the spring the bolt is responsible for everything it has to it has to extract it has to push the elevator down it has to work the locking mechanism so yes it works but it's hard work so here we are at 50 meters i've got uh, five loaded in the mag last one in the lifter let's see how we do
so here we have one misfire as you can see I hope there that's due to the slight off-center strike so uh, there's obviously not enough despite the soft primer so that's one of the downsides but as I said earlier I suspect that the primers of the day were bigger and probably more sensitive so here we are now there's uh, three more holes than they're supposed to and that's because I tried a few cartridges beforehand just to make sure that primers worked and they worked fine until I actually started filming anyway um, it's plenty respectable for a pistol caliber cartridge in a little carbine like that um, so yeah very happy with that so there we have it folks as you can see it works but it has its teething problems and that's to be expected considering it's it's the first of its kind um, but yeah you could see why it didn't really reach any major adoption it got issued to a couple of units of uh, sort of police uh, rural rural uh, police and that kind of thing um, which yeah which would be perfectly fine for that then they wouldn't be be used uh, in a heavy fighting or anything and and it's it's good uh, yeah plenty accurate enough for shooting at the odds of poacher or something um anyway alfred von kropacek came along and uh obviously took his inspiration from this obviously like the basic principle you have a tube magazine you have a lifter um and then yeah he solved all the things that were wrong with this um he got rid of this strange locking unlocking mechanism for the lifter which provides so much resistance and um he made it nicely centered along the along the bore axis and bolt axis and um, we've got rid of this strange sliding ejector controlled feed you know then uh, and then you had in terms of adoption you have the french that uh, took it up as the 1878 uh, naval cropper check and they liked it so much they went all the way up to 18, 1886 with the label now the uh, germans also took their inspiration um, although they didn't quite go all the way and that's why I find that the Mauser 7184 is actually not as not as good as a cropper check um, two things one they don't have the controlled feed in the magazine so you've still always got the the uh, force from the magazine from the ammunition stack on the last cartridge on the lifter and they also put the tilting mechanism on the side of the bolt rather than being centered which makes it really if you compare one of those to a label or a portuguese cropper check it's, just, it's really not as smooth anyway thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed the opportunity to see one of these rare little things and uh, don't forget to uh, check our usual nonsense on facebook and uh, our upcoming vids out and about and um, also thank you thank you to you all for your patreon contributions bye